The time has come, everybody. I believe I need to sell the 240 POSX car foolery fan favorite. It's been a ridiculous journey full of heartache, long, awful nights working with Steven and John. It's definitely been a memorable journey. Learned a lot. This car taught me that a free car is probably the most expensive kind of car. And it taught me that John and Steven know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to working on cars. Thanks to the ECU fiasco that we went through, we can build Speedwinos and we can actually tie them into cars and actually make a car run on a programmable ECU. That is a pretty amazing feat for a couple of guys to have accomplished. So I think I've owned this car for two years and a month right now. I've only driven it probably six weeks out of that time because it spent so much time being broken. I will say that I do understand why people really like S13s. It is like a dynamic car. I, I think how much aftermarket support it has is really cool. But I really don't enjoy the Magic as much as somebody else would and will. I think I should sell it. I have only like two grand into the car right now and hoping to sell it, you know, for, for more than $3,500 in this condition that it's in right now. Making that money would be pretty fantastic. The reasons why I don't want to sell the car is one, I do feel like there is a sentimental value with the car just because, you know, my friend Jerry uh, is who I got it from and I told him I was gonna fix it up and I, I told him I wasn't gonna sell it. And if I was gonna sell it, I would, I would let him know first in case if he wanted it back. But since then, um, every time I've brought up the car to him, he's had like zero interest in it at all. He doesn't even like to talk about it. And I do remember him saying once that if he ever wanted another 240SX in his life, he would just buy a better one. And with that in the back of my mind, I, I keep telling myself that that's why it's okay to sell this car. I don't need to feel bad about selling it. Yeah, it's a pretty clean 240SX, but if you wanted to be like 240SX guy and have like a, a super awesome one, this is, this is not the one that you would want to start with. This one has just so many small annoying problems. Like all the problems it has are not the kind of problems that are fun to fix, which is why I basically haven't fixed any of them at this point. Another reason I feel like I shouldn't sell this car is because I think the internet keeps hinting at the fact that this is an appreciating classic. But that's the thing though. I say the fact that it's an appreciating classic, but here's the deal. My friend Jerry, I'm like 95% sure he bought this car in basically this condition right now in 2012 for about $4,000. That was seven years ago. And since then, the car has not gotten any more miles on it according to the information the car has. So according to the selling information, there's no extra miles on it. In the seven years that I've gone by, there's got to be less and less of these all one color, decently straight 240SXs in the world definitely in the country. So you'd think that the prices would, would have gone up a lot, right? But that's the thing. I'm now gonna be selling the car in basically the same condition it was in when Jerry bought it for basically the same exact amount of money. So it doesn't seem like it's gone up in value at all. Will it go up in value in the next five years, maybe 10 years? Probably, but could you make a lot more money by just having the 3,500-ish dollars that I'll sell it for? and being able to invest that money into other stuff and then make way more money that way? I think so. I think that is just the better move to make. You know, one day down the road, these cars might be worth just a F ton of money. But this one in this condition, I don't think it's ever gonna be worth that much money. All right, that was the end of Fox Hollow. Let's see what she's got. Another reason why I want to sell a car, this car is not fast. Um, a <laughs> basically stock dual cam S13 is not a fast car. This car drives very, very similar to a like 1991 
Toyota Celica. It's even a two plus two seating, you know, fastback, like a Toyota Celica. I mean, I can feel that it's rear wheel drive. And so that's cool. I like knowing that it's rear wheel drive in the back of my head. I know I'm driving something kind of special, but this thing gets horrible gas mileage for as light as it is. The 2.4 liter engine makes pretty much dog shit for power in my opinion. And if you gave Honda 2.4 liters to work with, you'd be getting a lot better of a motor than this thing. Like the Honda Accord uh, 2.2s with VTEC from the, from the mid 90s, I'm pretty sure that would be a better engine to have than this freaking thing. And I know that this engine was kind of designed to be like insurance friendly and stuff, but I don't know, in 2019, where, where we are right now, that shit's not important anymore. And like, yeah, we have it on a programmable ECU, so like I could turbo this and like make a bunch of power doing that. God, I don't, I don't trust the engineering of these KAs. I don't trust the engineering on like any Nissan engines. And that might be the Toyota douchebag in me. It might also be that Nissan just makes really shitty engines. Like they make good power, not this one. They make good power, but God, they just seem like they have so many freaking problems. And the entire time I've owned this car, it's just been a crazy amount of problems, one after another, and just bleeding me dry. And like now it's in a condition where it can just drive around, and I still don't trust it. What's up, Miata guy? So yeah, the driving experience of the car, it's really not that special. I think one of the things I will miss about this car is I do really like the way it looks. Um, I think S13 hatches are very beautiful cars, which I hate to admit, but I like that the way the hatch looks way more than the coupe does. I know that the uh, fixed headlight, like Sylvia thing, is really popular, um, but I love pop-up headlights, so I actually prefer S13s to have the pop-up still. I just think that they're so cool. Like when this car was just broken down outside of my house for a whole year, I remember like going outside at night and I would just look over at it and see that awesome, uh, that silhouette shape of it. I think it's a really cool looking car, but I'll live without it. The biggest thing I'm gonna miss about this car is the attention this car gets when you drive it. Like people see a decently clean S13, you know, it's all one color. People lose their minds. Like I drive my MR2s all the time, every day. And very, very rarely do people give me a second look or like want to street race me. And I don't, I don't know why that is, but you get in a freaking S13, start driving around, people lose their freaking minds and they just want to start drag racing with you. They want to start fucking with you on the street. And it's crazy. Like, like why are people so, why do people act that way? But I, you know, do have many, many emotional issues. So I love the attention that this car gets. So I'm definitely going to miss that. Like this car, if I took, if I went to like a local car meet and I took this car, people are gonna be like, oh man, that S13 is so cool, so clean. Ah, oh, drift this, drift that, you know, dual cam. And uh, I mean, people will also probably tie all of those comments with, are you gonna do this, are you gonna do that? Which my answer would be no. I, it's basically in the condition I wanted the car to be in. Uh, and I still don't like it that much. However, if I went to that same car meet with my MR2, like I've been to car meets with my MR2 and people barely give a shit about it. And I'm pretty sure MR2s are way more rare. My MR2 turbo is, you know, way faster. It makes over double the wheel horsepower that this thing makes. People just don't give a shit about MR2. So, so that definitely drives me crazy that I'm gonna have to live without this much attention that the car gives me, but you know, whatever, things happen though. Gotta grow up eventually, I guess. All those nights outside of my parents' house in the rain with Steven trying to figure out why the car wouldn't run on the Speedwino when we first plugged it in. All those days, we would order a brand new ECU off the internet or a junkyard and it would show up and either be the wrong ECU or just be freaking broken 
dead on arrival. You now the ups and downs have been very intense with this car, but it's been 98% downs and 2% ups. So it's just time to move on. But before we do, let's talk about how she drives. Getting into the hairpin section of this little test loop that I like to do. Acceleration, terrible. Like I said, like a 2.2 liter 1991 Toyota Celica would totally keep up with this thing in this Nissan's current form. How does it go around corners? Pretty good. The seats, the seats are nice. Um, I kind of like that. What's it, injected foam, whatever the heck these seats are called. the 50 50 weight distribution and that is actually really nice um, but for half the money it takes to buy one of these you could just have a Miata I know you can't a little bit of tire slip there I know you can't daily a Miata as easily as you can daily one of these because this is just bigger and it has two more seats but this one this gets like two-thirds the gas mileage that a, a Miata gets so I don't know it Kind of depending on what you have to do when you're daily driving, a Miata might actually be better. And like, if you wanted to be stared at while you drove a car, the 240SX is gonna do you way better than a, you know, front wheel drive Toyota Celica from the same time period. But the Toyota Celica is gonna get better gas mileage too. Toyota Celica is gonna be way more reliable. This thing is an interference engine. I hate interference engines well when i say i hate interference engines maybe i should say that i hate interference engines from the 90s and earlier because i know eventually you need to get to a, a point in technology where you want the high compression ratio that a uh, interference engine can give you but this thing makes no freaking power for how big it is a 2.4 liter dual cam four valve per cylinder it does not make very good power at all and they've still engineered it to be an interference engine. That timing, uh, if that timing chain goes, like you lose the motor. So stupid, so stupid. Mazda Miata, 1.6 and the 1.8, timing belt snaps, no freaking problem. Throw a new belt on there, keep driving it. 5SFE, 3S GTE, Toyota engines, timing belt, non-interference, that thing snaps, who gives a shit, replace it, you're back on the street losing to Mustangs left and right. Yeah, I guess this is just a car for drifters and that's why they're kind of expensive now. It's because of that drift tax, but I don't like drifting. I, I have no intention of getting into the sport of drifting. You know, I've got all my money sunk into autocross and being an MR2 owner and autocrossing and MR2s is not exactly a drifting setup. And with all that said, I think that's it for this. This nice little drive in the countryside. I am gonna miss this thing, but I am gonna miss it probably just because I'm an overly sentimental idiot. But I do appreciate everything that we've learned from this car. Uh, the Carfoolery team is way more technologically advanced now than we were uh, before we started this whole thing. So thank you very much, Nissan, but you're just not doing it for me. And whoever buys this thing, uh, I really do hope the best for you. And I really hope that it's like reliable and fun for you, but just not for me.